Hey everyone, my name is Ned and welcome back to ARC2 news info. Let's go over it. This is very significant for lore stuff, so that's why I want to talk a lot about it. Uh, so let's get right into it. The founders, uh, Jeremy Stiglitz and Jesse Rapchak, posted this uh, redefining the survival genre with ARC2 and an update from the studio founders being them, uh, which includes a ton of new information about ARC2, ARC1 on Nintendo Switch, uh, lore significance, a bunch of stuff on the Switch version specifically, and animated series stuff. So we're going to talk all about that really quick. I don't want to waste your time. Let's get right into it. So ARC2. Um, yeah, they're currently working out a sequel. Yes, that is that is very much happening. Um, and they say right here, uh, Steam Early Access console launch exclusive for Xbox Series X and S with Xbox and PC Game Pass on game preview. So, yep, like they said, uh, it's not coming to PlayStation on launch right off the bat. Um, they released their trailer, which you can see my reaction to that up above in the corner, as well as my whole reaction to the trailer and in analyzing it and taking a look at all the little details, as well as what the Steam page says, which is a lot of what this says as well, but there's tons of other stuff here. So, survive the past, tame the future. Uh, I already went through this on, on the Steam version, but basically they're going for something completely new with this. They're, they're trying, you know, they're still doing ARC, but they're trying a lot of new things and some of those things are kind of weird and, and strange, but I'm, uh, I'm all, all, all for new things, all for change. So Epic Story starring Vin Diesel, uh, legendary arc hero Santiago, we of course know a lot about him. Um, experience an epoch spanning adventure as he tries to, uh, you know, protect his daughter, um, from, which is voiced by a, a woman who, uh, voiced a character in Moana, probably the main character, <laughs> uh, or someone important. Um, from the ghosts of the ancient past and visions of a new future. So that's really kind of vague, but the ghosts of the ancient past element, maybe, perhaps, possibly. Uh, revolutionary cross-platform modding. This is really cool. So uh, they're talking about mods that are created and implemented with uh, official support and able to be played on console. So modding is going to be bigger than ever, I think, with Arc 2. Um, because it's not just going to be available on Steam, and uh, well, yeah, just Steam. It's going to be Steam, uh, Epic if they put it on Epic, I guess, um, in the, all the other platforms, Xbox, all that. Um, let's see, Mod IO. Um, Mod IO is a cross-platform UGC solution supporting 11 game systems and stores. So it seems like it's kind of um, niche, like it's not used by many devs. Uh, we're connecting Arc 2 with a complete ecosystem, which mods can exist, be present, and accessed in game. That's really cool. Uh, now, this is a weird part. Uh, Best-in-class third-person-only gameplay. So, advanced character traversal mechanics like mantling, free climbing, parkour, sliding, and swinging. Um, Lara Croft, Tomb Raider, uh, Last of Us, sort of Nathan Drake, all of these games where you're uh, playing in third-person and you're controlling this character that can parkour and climb all over the environment and stuff. Um, so, it looks like that's going to be a thing here. I really hope it's not, like, super scripted and, like, Assassin's Creed-level stuff because that, that would just suck. Um, but I'm excited to see what's going on with that. Uh, it's definitely going to be jarring. I love first person. I love first person games. It's, I'm going to miss that from arc one because that was one of my favorite features. You get to see through the eyes of your survivor, but it looks like it's just third person here. Souls like melee combat, target lock, uh, blocks, dodges, combos, staggers, special attacks, emphasizing player skill based action. So uh, player skill based action. Th th this is the kind of language that can be uh, definitely used to exaggerate how cool the system is going to be. I'm, I'm a little skeptical, for sure. Um, but if they pull this off right, I think it can be really cool. Uh, as long as they don't... You know, it, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about Atlas, and I'm like, please do not try and do another Atlas. So, we can hope. Uh, it's going to be early access, which we'll talk about in just a second. But, uh, massive new alien environment. Exploring mysterious, chaotic world where native flora and fauna are being overrun by invasive, invasive primeval creatures from an extinct Earth. We've got all the dinosaurs from Ark, or a lot of the dinosaurs from Ark 1 here, uh, at least from the colony ship. Um, you know, some of them could have died off, and maybe that's their explanation for not adding, like, every single Gen 2 creature to Ark 2 and to the planet of Arat. Component-based item crafting. This is really cool. So, construct your weapons and tools from a range of distinct modules to customize their look and functionality. Um, millions of possible combinations enable you to craft your own unique gear, the specific materials you choose will further affect the appearance of your items with multiple options of resources found in unique regions of the world. Okay, so a lot of games tout this. This is something that you need to, we need to sort of be wary of. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Dying Light 2. 
uh, played through that twice, got both the bad endings. Um, that also was a game that touted this kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, you can customize your weapons with all these, like, all the millions of combinations and all these different things. Um, Again, this is something they can pull off poorly or they can pull off really well and it'll be really cool. Um, it'll add a, sort, a certain level of sort of like personalization uh, to your gear um, beyond just dying. I mean, we're talking about modifying it with sort of actual like mo uh, modules, I guess, distinct modules. That's the kind of language they use to, to, you know, to customize the look of this gear. So. Um, I guess this this won't. I, I was just thinking tools like tools and weapons, but I guess this will probably apply to armor and stuff too. Um, so that's that's really awesome. Dynamic world events, natural and unnatural occurrences are always happening across the game world, independent of your presence. Okay, your choices in deciding whether to interact with these events will yield rewards or challenges. So this is I'm thinking sort of world um, world events from like World of Warcraft. Um, that's really freaking cool. I mean, we've had tons of like, you know, weather events in Arc 1, for example, with like the meteors, the OSDs that would drop by every now and then an extinction. Um, but this seems like it's going to be a completely new um, sort of like, I don't know, maybe there'll be like a random earthquake in a very specific spot and it starts opening up cracks in the in the world and you can like go and mine stuff or there's like some invasion of creatures. I mean, that's that's freaking fascinating. They could do so much with that. Um, Opposing PvE, force, hostile, aratai, hunt and attack you, riding their own tamed creatures as you seek to drive human interlopers into the world. Okay, so anthropomorphic enemies. We're talking about human type of enemies. Um, now, these are uh, presumably, yeah, so they're not humans, but they're kind of like humans. They're like anthropomorphic. They're these like orc. I think they're re referring to the orcs from the Arc 1, uh, Arc 2 trailer that we got like a year or two ago. Um, those big, like, blue guys. So, I guess we know, now know that they're called Aratai. Aratai. Um, and so they're also going to be riding their own tames. That's, that's insane. Um, they didn't really give much info, info about these. Pre presumably they're not to do with element. Maybe they found element from the Gen 2 ship. I don't know. Or maybe they had element on the, on the world all along. Guess we'll see. Uh, advanced template building and sharing. This is interesting. So it looks like what they're doing here is they're going to have sort of these, uh, like, you can basically save your structures that you place down and then, uh, like, place down a blueprint for, like, the entire layout of those structures, like a foundation here, foundation here, 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 here. And then, like, other people, like your tribe mates, could come and, like, contribute. They can see that blueprint in, like, a 3D way and contribute to it by, like, placing a foundation in where it's already set to be, if that makes sense. You're like, you can sort of like, oh my, you could maybe even like build stuff in single player, assuming they have a single player mode, which I'm sure they will, um, build stuff in single player and then copy that like template and go to multiplayer and be like, all right guys, yo, let's build our, our cool base. I already designed it in single player, let's build it here. So everyone gathers their resources and places their structures into the the new like template that, that the you know, one person plays down. That might be possible. Um, Save them, share them. Yeah, I mean, layouts, uh, place perspective template layouts in the world to then build them out as a team. That's really cool. Sensory based creature AI. So, okay, no omnipresent radar. Animals now track and hunt by sight, sound, and smell. Hide from predators with visual camouflage and environmental obstructions and learn to mask your scent. Dynamic pathfinding enables creatures to intelligently maneuver around obstacles and player built structures. So, Dynamic pathfinding. That that already exists in Ark, I'm pretty sure. Um, but maybe, but obviously, maybe not to the extent that they're talking about here. Again, I'm skeptical of a lot of these things. If that is a thing, that that would be super cool. Uh, character progression and skill system. Gain both experience points from gameplay and knowledge points by accomplishing key objectives, uh, unique challenges. Okay, so there's going to be some kind of skill tree, uh, obviously here. Um, I hope that's not like Atlas. Uh, Arc 1 didn't really have anything like this. They had the engrams and, and you could put points into um, into your stats to like make you faster, make you stronger, make you do more melee, health, all that. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Um, having a whole skill tree. Uh, it's almost like becoming kind of like an MMO. But I think they're, they're really, they're not trying to like say, they're trying to go for something completely new, which is like re- like a redefining the survival genre instead of saying, oh, we're just more like an MMO. I think they want to sort of like 
be like, we are survival games two, like 2.0. Uh, see foliage re uh, react convincingly to passing wildlife. Okay, so like moving foliage, water flow uh, downstream around obstacles, volumetric storm clouds, localized weather systems, smoke and particles affected by physical forces, and much more fundamental advancement of lighting systems enables a more photorealistic day-night cycle, generating real-time ambient lighting and shadows within both natural and player-constructed environments. Uh, so that is freaking awesome. So ray tracing? Ray tracing, maybe, hopefully. Uh, redefining the survival uh, genre with R2. So this here's a, a basically a message from Jeremy and Jesse. Um, I don't want to read the whole, you, you guys can read it. Uh, maybe you're watching this so that you don't have to read it. Um, but basically, uh, they're talking about how uh, Jeremy Steglitz and Je Jesse Rapchak, they're basically the uh, co-founders of ARC. And they're, it's sort of just a message from them. They're really talking about how like they started ARC uh, 1, not anticipating that it was going to be as big as it has become. Um, <laughs> they do mention that ARC 2's main narrative tells the story of a father and daughter, Mika, uh, of betrayal and broken promises and the strength of the family bond. Ah, nice. And of course, it's a story of badass giant dinosaurs. But even more importantly, this is about players' own stories like any good persistent world online survival game. Survivors in Arc 2 each have their own unique path through the game as they form their own tribe, make their own friends, and attempt to build their own creature-aided civilization, much like we did in Arc 1. With Arc 2, we're not uh, seeking just only to enhance the game's narrative and world building, but also retouch and improve on all aspects of what constitutes an ARC game. Foremost among these redesigns are the core player mechanics and the sequel, which is third person only. Controls and movement for both creatures and players have been completely redesigned. Oh, I didn't read this part. Taking inspiration from games like Assassin's Creed automatic parkour and Breath of the Wild's climbing, player characters can now clamber over the environment in a more realistic and freeform manner. Oh no, Assassin's Creed, that's specifically what I said I don't want. Oh no. With a focus on primitive era combat, Santiago and Tech have a complicated relationship. Oh yeah. Arc 2 draws heavily from Souls-like action for its human-scale combat, an emphasis on dodges, blocks, light and, light and heavy attacks, combos, and player reflex skill, a rarity for the PvE survival, PvP survival genre. That's actually really true. Uh, because it's really rare that anyone actually pulls this off, uh, which makes me skeptical. For creature scale combat, suffice it to say for now that when you attack something with your T-Rex in Arc 2, the results are visceral. The animation of the attack actually hard impacts on the target, not passing through it. The victim's flesh is torn and the target physically reacts, as, reacts at that location to the hit, all to convey the feeling of the raw power of such a ferocious creature. Whoa, custom animations? Up from the depths is going to be really happy about that. Another area that we're particularly excited about is the world event system. Rather than simply having a more or less static environment with easily predictable or repetitive occurrences a la Arc 1, the new world event system is designed to ensure that unique things are always happening around the world, whether you're there or not. Events include procedurally dynamic scenarios like watering hole gatherings, wounded creatures, Tracking the signs of advanced prey, stampedes, herds, defending endangered creatures to earn their trust, finding dens of parent creatures and their young, and more. Whether you choose to engage with these events is up to you, and each can yield unique rewards and challenges. This is like so much information. Uh, there are too many areas, oh, other areas of fundamental changes in Arc 2, whether it's the new opposing force, Aratai, who have their own tames, the new creature management, and proper world map systems, the advanced component-based item crafting that enables players to choose exactly what their gear looks and functions like from millions of potential combinations. Uh, again, I get really iffy when, when devs are like, dude, we have like millions of potential combinations. It's like, okay, man, okay. Or the revamped build system, which provides innumerable more building options and enables saving and sharing of build templates. Or, or, well, there's just too much to go over here. You'll get your first preview of the Arc 2 gameplay down the road, and we think you'll like what you see. <laughs> Finally, saving perhaps the best for last. Arc 2 adds a revolutionary new feature for console players, fully stackable user-created mods. Yep, 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 this means players who create mods using the PC version will be able to upload them to the cloud, and console players can enjoy them as well. Awesome. Um, yeah, they they definitely. Yes, moderators can re add first person vote. Yes! Okay, cool. 
With the power of Unreal Engine 5, the only limit will be the imagination of the content creators themselves. We're super stoked to witness the mind-blowing additions the players will no doubt create in their mods and maps, and we believe that having all such all such user-generated content playable on, Arc, on console in Arc 2 with complete cross-platform server integration is going to change the nature of the, con of the genre forever. Put simply, Arc 2, with Arc 2, our goal is to make the game that we all wanted Arc 1 to be now that we have the time, resources, and knowledge to do it right. So in 2023, on Xbox in 2077, 2023 on Xbox and PC Game Pass. We'll look forward to seeing you all in this new world of primeval creatures and legendary heroes. Just keep an eye out for Vin. He likes to play on his Series X more than you might expect, and his skill at wrangling a giga is unequaled. Yours truly, Jeremy Stieglitz and Jesse Rapchak and the wildcard team. Let's go! Okay, we've got so much more. We, I need to go over this really fast. All right, so Arcs Development and Grove Street Games Partnership. I was, I was mentioned this in the last video briefly. Arcs Development has always benefited from external teams. Um, blah, 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 blah. So, uh, Grove Street Games to co-develop Arc 2 and rewrite the Nintendo Switch code with a full game. Okay, so they're helping with the whole Nintendo Switch thing. Um, Thomas Williamson, the director of Grove Street, will be development director and technical director of Arc 2, with parts of the Grove Street Games team also joining the Arc 2's production in a development partnership. Um, so Jess, Jeremy and Jesse will balance their time between games and the expansion of the Arc franchise across multiple platforms and formats, with Jeremy focusing his creative efforts on the TV series and other initiatives, whilst continuing to serve as executive producer of Arc 2. Jesse is going to continue as creative director of Arc 2 and co-creator of the TV series. Cool, so Jeremy's kind of taking the reins with the uh, animated series, and Jesse's taking the reins on Arc 2. We are beyond thrilled that Thomas and the Incredibly team at... Ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah. We, we know many of you have been also uh, waiting expectedly for news on the animated series, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it has 14, we already knew this, 14 30-minute episodes in post-production to celebrate this milestone. They've released the first poster images of the key characters, which we've already seen. Oh. Well, yes. Okay. Yes. But yeah, we've already seen these. Um, wait, that's Aberration. Wait, no, that's not Ab I think that's just his his shop. Yeah, okay. But I don't know why Santiago's there. Okay. Arc the Animated Series chronicles the story of a mysterious prime of land uh, populated by dinosaurs and extinct creatures where people from throughout human history have been resurrected. When 21st century Australian paleontologist Helena Walker awakes on the Ark after tragedy, she must uh, learn to survive and find new allies or die again at the hands of ruthless warlords, all while trying to uncover the true nature of their strange new world. This is really important right here, the whole Nintendo Switch thing. Especially for the LARK community, you'll find out why in just a second. In April, they announced that the Nintendo Switch would be receiving a completely rehauled version of ARK that will include enhancements uh, and upgrades to bring it in line with the other platforms. Uh, so, ARK Ultimate Survivor Edition will introduce new story cutscenes to conclude each ARK map featuring actors Maddie Madison, Maddie Madden. I thought it was Madison Madden. Madeline. Madeline Madden? Maddie Matt. Okay, I'm having an aneurysm. So, David Tennant, yep, uh, reprising their res respective roles as Helena Walker and Edmund Rockwell. All of Helena and Rockwell's dossiers and explore notes will also be voiced by the actors, as well as Survivor's epic confrontation versus Rockwell and Ark Aberration. Madden will also voice the cheery robot AI. So, hold on, before I even continue, they've just stolen the survival stories idea. Thanks, guys! Ugh! That's awesome, though! But we have to beat you in time, and we have to finish, finish the survival stories before September, uh, in that case, so, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Madden will also voice the cheery robot AI guide, HLNA, in the young explorers mode that will lead players through ARC in a low-pressure, kid-friendly, dino-fact-filled adventure. We're happy to show you what to expect in September. Now, tune in at 1.30 p.m. Pacific, which is, uh, 4.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern, which is my time zone, uh, tomorrow. It, as of this video, uh, they're going to be showing first gameplay of Arc Ultimate Survivor Edition on Switch. So, uh, this time, uh, if you want to show up, if you happen to be watching this video, like right around the time it airs, uh, show up then. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be there. Definitely looking forward to, to what they're doing there. And then, of course, you know, if the order releases today, um, that is happening. Uh, expect videos on that, of course, with the monarchy. Um, also, if you don't have Ark already, go grab Ark. Ark is free to own on Steam for the next like week as of this video. So June 19th by 10 a.m. PDT. Get the game. If you don't have it already, grab it. You can grab it for free. 
um, and you'll just have it forever. So this is a limited, limited time offer. Get it if you can. If you have any friends that, that have the game, get them to buy it or to get it for free. They don't they buy it for zero dollars. Get the game and uh, become a survivor today. But anyway, um, thank you all so much for watching this video. We went over a lot. Uh, this is like 23 minutes. I rarely ever make these kinds of videos. I insist on high quality stuff. Um, but this is just my one man's thoughts and sort of uh, 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 summary, I guess, uh, sort of summary of, of everything. So, uh, yeah, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.